Great. Um, so I think that's now recording. So yes, we're going to go through doing a QC of the flow cell. So I think you should all have um, a flow cell. Um, so I've opened it out of its packet and they live in the fridge, not the freezer. Um, so I'm doing it with um, a min iron. So I think they're called Mark 1Bs, whereas okay. I know that you guys have a Mark 1C, but it's the same principle. And hopefully you'll see that on my big screen, it will be the same okay. minnow software as the one that you can see on your screen. So, um, yeah. so the first thing you need to do is to take your flow cell out of its little packet and you should be able to see that there's sort of a computer chip thing at one end and this is the end that when you have a look in your uh, min iron section, oops, that way around, you can see that there's kind of a, there should be a clip and the chip section goes in to the clip. So the bit where the, um, the ASICS panel is goes into the clip. Um, and you should find that then the little bit of the um, chip will fit into the hole in the min iron. Um, and so that's your flow cell loaded. I'm just going to put it down on the, uh, on the desk. So now by my mouse, I'm going to go into my minnow software. Um, as you've got a Mark 1C, uh, a Mark 1C, yeah, you should, probably don't have to do that, but hopefully this will load up. Usually it's, ah, there we go. So you might find you have to log in, which is giving me pain because I've put my keyboard over here. So if this is the first time you've been on Minnow, it will sort of tell you how to go through the tutorial. Um, but I think for this purpose, I will just skip the tutorial. So what you should see is over here, it says my device. Um, and I guess on the Mark 1C, it will already know what the device is because it's attached yeah. to it. But here, yeah. this is the number of my um, flow cell. Okay. So I just need to click on that. And that okay. brings up this panel here. And you can see that it says, or hopefully you can see that it says flow cell not checked. Um, yes. So that's because my flow cell um, on this computer, we haven't checked um, the number of pores. Um, so the way we can do that is if we go, I'll open this up here. So you can just click on the three little lines and this brings up your kind of menu. If we go to start, which then brings up this panel here uh, and we can go to flow cell check. And this brings up the um, both the, the min iron um, and also the flow cell that I've got in the min iron. Um, the, so that's the flow cell ID there. So that's the number on the flow cell and that's the type of flow cell. Um, and if I just go down to start, it should hopefully do that and then say navigating back. Um, and what you'll see here is it's getting to 37 degrees. So it has to be... Um, that what the minnow itself and the, the the sort of flow cell holder panel section of your Mark 1C is, is kind of basically a sort of a heating device. And then um, the sort of data sort of transfer section. Um, so you should be able to see that there's some light. Um, and sometimes if it's quite cold in the lab, which it is in my lab, um, you can give it a gentle, um, a gentle hug <laughs> and hopefully that should speed it up because I know if it takes longer than 10 minutes to get to the temperature it needs to be at um, then it fails and you kind of have to start again hopefully in Sudan it won't be too cold but uh, just a tip no, if you're lab, ever in the no, Arctic no, 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 it's a little bit warm so no, 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 no. so this process will That's, be very uh, yours uh, should be very quick then mine will be quite slow because we have air conditioning in here oh. and it's and it's England so Anyway, you if should you, see. If you have a look, if you have a look for your for Hannah's screens, you can see it. Yes, it's excellent. Right. So you're doing the same as me. So you yes. can see that the blue line is moving along the screen, yeah, and so moving. hopefully, moving once it's got to its temperature, this will then change yeah. to say um, doing QC. Um, but yeah, it takes takes a little bit of time to do. You should presumably feel it warming up if you touch, especially the bottom, it warms up. Also sometimes, so we use, um, again, because it's cold in here, we use mouse mats because that helps to insulate 
it against the cold desk. Um, so we run our min irons on mouse mats. Um, but again, <laughs> if it's hot in your lab, you probably won't have that problem. So uh, yeah, we just have to no, no, no. get up to temperature. So the QC check is um, what's called a dry QC because you're not adding any buffer or any liquid or anything. You're purely just doing a, a kind of an electrical check of the pores that are on the flow cell to see whether they're actually working or not. Um, so a, a complete flow cell um, for the min iron has about just over 2000 pores, but usually you get, if it's in decent condition, it's usually somewhere between about 1,500 and 1,000 and anything below 800 um, is below the nanopore um, guarantee. And so you can send it back to nanopore and they'll replace it, which has happened a few times to us. Um, and they were very, they were very quick about it. Although maybe getting to Sudan might be different. <laughs> so I sometimes find that if I QC, so we've got two computers here and I find if I QC it on one computer, it doesn't recognize that the flow cell has been QC'd if I do it on the yeah. other computer. So you might have to factor that in when you do your run because the sort of last bit of the protocols when you're loading the flow cells and stuff is quite time precious. It's worth just checking before you start to whether you whether or not your nano uh, your flow cell has been QC'd on the computer that you're planning to use because <laughs> I've done that a couple of times and I've assumed it's it's already QC'd it and it knows it but it seems to sort of forget after a while and so then I'm rushing around because it's a, sometimes takes about 15 minutes or so to do it and so uh, yeah it's worth maybe doing it before you before you start or at a, a quiet part of the uh, <laughs> protocol. I've also found that whilst the flow cells are guaranteed for three months, I found that they work yeah. all right after that, as long as they're kept in the cold room or a fridge. In fact, we found some um, flow cells that were kept in our cold room for about three years, and I used them recently, and they were really good. In fact, they had much better, mm -hmm. a better number of pores than some of the more recent ones that we've got. So, um, yes. So just because they've gone over, it's yeah, it's the technology is uh, is pretty pretty cool actually. It's it, the fact that it can make it all the way to um, you know all over the world and stay um, intact and stuff because the the flow cells themselves are very very clever, very smart piece of uh, engineering. Ah, good. So mine now says checking flow cell. So Already. I can, yeah. So I've been been hugging it. So you can click on here and that will bring up this um, channels panel. And so what it does, um, maybe it should, once it's properly started, you'll see that it starts to check pause. And when it checks the pore and it's active, the pore will go green. There you go, like that. So there are four, from what I understand, there are four different um, sections on a, on a flow cells ASICS um, panel. And so it has to do a MUX scan four times. Usually it shows you the... Um, the um, overview, but it may well be because I've um, made my screen so big you can't see it. Um, but yes, yeah, so basically this is the kind of information that you should see. Ah, so you've got the same as well now I can see. So as I say, it takes usually about 10 minutes or so. Um, and when my screen is um, smaller it's usually got a sort of a panel up at the top that tells you at what point what stage you're at but because I made it bigger so you could all see it it might not be visible so yeah if you click through these ways so this is just telling you how much voltage is going through and each time it does the scan you'll see that it peaks and as I say this will take 
it seems to depend on the power of the computer because my other computer is less powerful and it takes longer whereas this one is is got 32 gigs of ram although it's only a cpu rather than a gpu but it still seems much quicker um and that just tells you what the temperature is but hopefully if it's running you shouldn't need to worry about the temperature because usually once it's going it's fine so you can click on this as well and it will give you more information about um, the pause and it should bring up a, the, there you go. <laughs> uh, Lindsay, would you please have a look for, for Hannah device, for Hannah screen? We already yeah. finished our quality check and we found like 700 okay. spores active. Okay. It's less than 800. So yeah, they, that's less than 800. So that- Yeah, they, they ask you mm. to- that to them, I, I think if it's less than 800. Yeah, you should be able to ask for... Do, do, we need, do we need to repeat this again, this quality check again for the same floor cell? Yes. So if you go on the Nanopore community website, I'll try and find you the link. There's a... There is, there is a, com a comment on Hannah's screen when, when we... I, okay, can't, this, I can't read it. Can you read it out to me? Okay. So they, they say... 796 spores found. This flow yep. cell is below warranty level. Please remove the flow cell and reinsert it into the sequencing device, then perform okay. the flow cell check again. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, try that. So what mm. Nanopore said to me when I did it and got below 800 is that you should take it out, switch everything mm -hmm. off and turn it back mm -hmm. on again okay. and then retest the flow cell. And I, I think there was also something else that they requested that you do, which was just check that there was no bubble in front of the sensor, but there was a document somewhere that I will mm. see if I can find for you that explains mm. um, how to do that, because I think they want to make, sometimes a small bubble of air can be lodged in the way of the, the sensor that tells you how many um, pores are active. So it may well be that that's the case, but I think usually it just means that the flow cell isn't, uh, doesn't have as many active pores as it should. So do we um, need do we need to do this uh, process for all the uh, flow cells we have or just uh, yeah you should yeah because if something we can report early maybe yeah I would I mean usually they tell you to do it within a couple of days of receiving them but I mean it's it shouldn't be a problem um, so you can see on my one that I've got one thousand one hundred and ninety one yeah. pause so mine is a Okay, I wouldn't say great, but it's it's not too bad. It's better than us um, in all cases. <laughs> yes, exactly. Otherwise, it can work, no problem. <laughs> so, I mean, a, a flow cell with less than 800 isn't useless. It just means that you can kind of, you will get half the amount of data off it because yeah. something with 1,400 is going to process, you know, twi twice as much or so as something with with one uh, with 700. So it's it's not useless, but definitely nanopore should be replacing ones that are below 800. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the policy is for getting them to different countries, but certainly in the UK there, once you contact customer support, they're quite quick about it. So um, yeah, we'll just, <laughs> we'll have to see. But uh, I must admit the newer flow cells that we've been receiving are, are not as, they don't have as many active pores as the, uh, the other one, the sort of older ones that we've had. So I don't know whether it's a a manufacturing issue or, or whether it's just the luck of the draw when you get them sent to you, I'm not quite sure. Okay. I'll stop recording now because we don't really need to just see my screen sitting there and it's quite hard for me to see what you're doing. So I'll stop that.